Hi guys today I bring you top 10 games so if you haven't subscribed my channel then subscribe now and press the bell icon next to it so that the notification of the next video goes to you. Starting off with number 10 it's Pacific Drive a very interesting game, something we've been looking at since it was announced back in September of 2022. Pacific Drive is a survival game played from a first-person perspective. The game is set in 1998 in the Olympic Exclusion Zone in the Pacific Northwest, which the player traverses on foot or in a station wagon. The player can customize their vehicle in their garage, which acts as their base of operations. Vehicle diagnostics are carried out using a headset. The car will occasionally develop quirks to be repaired such as the horn sounding when the wheel is turned. Some repairs can be performed while traversing the world, such as swapping flat tires and mending with a blowtorch. Though complex repairs are handled in the garage, the garage's inventing station harvests resources and creates machines, including some that discover new routes, add fuel to the car, and destabilize a zone. A buzzsaw can be used to harvest scrap metal from other wrecked vehicles. Weather elements alter the vehicle's handling, as the player traverses the world, metal monsters will latch onto their car and chew at the metal. They can be removed with the buzzsaw. Other obstacles include electrical anomalies and barriers that disrupt the player's electronics. Additional locations become available to the player as they continue their journey. Throughout their travels, they can discover crafting recipes and blueprints to improve their vehicle, and find notes, audio logs, and communicate with non-player characters to escape the Olympic exclusion zone. In each level, the player collects energy cores to open gateways, which returns them to their garage. Doing so makes the world more hostile, setting off enemies and starting a destructive storm which will eventually envelop the player. And number 9 is Nightingale. Nightingale is a first-person, PvE, open-world survival crafting game played solo or cooperatively with friends. Build, craft, fight and explore as you venture through mystical portals into a variety of amazing and fantastical realms. Genres Open world After the Earth suffers a disaster, interdimensional travelers escape to other realms, each of which is procedurally generated. Players control one such traveler as they attempt to return to Nightingale, a human enclave created in the Feywilds, before the emergence of the Pale that caused the disaster. Nightingale takes place in a Victorian-era gas lamp fantasy setting, which uses aesthetics similar to steampunk. As a survival game, players must find food to eat, rest to recover their stamina, and gather resources to craft tools. Players can create simple items, such as a bedroll, easily. Bedrolls do not require shelter, though shelter helps to recover more stamina. When crafted, umbrellas allow players to glide around like Mary Poppins. Some creatures are not hostile and will only defend themselves when attacked. In combat, players can attack with either melee weapons or firearms. And number 8 is Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a 2003 first-person shooter game developed by Infinity Ward and published by Activision. As a first-person shooter, Call of Duty places the player in control of an infantry soldier who makes use of various authentic World War II firearms in combat. Each mission features a series of objectives that are marked on the heads-up display's compass. The player must complete all objectives to advance to the next mission. The player can save and load at any time, rather than the checkpoint system utilized in later Call of Duty games. The player has two primary weapon slots, a handgun slot, and can carry up to 10 grenades. Weapons may be exchanged with those found on the battlefield dropped by dead soldiers. Unlike later Call of Duty games, the first allows the player to toggle between different firing modes, single shot or automatic fire. Call of Duty was one of the early first-person shooters to feature iron sights in gameplay. By pressing the corresponding key the player aims down the gun's actual sights for increased accuracy. In addition to weapons carried by the player, mounted machine guns and other fixed weapon emplacements are controllable by the player. The game uses a standard health point system, with a limited amount of health reflected by a health bar. Medkits scattered throughout the levels are dropped by some foes are used to restore health when the player is injured. Call of Duty also featured, Shellshock, not to be confused with the psychological condition of the same name, when there is an explosion near the player, he momentarily experiences simulated tinnitus. Appropriate sound, 
muffling, effects, blurred vision, and also results in the player slowing down, unable to sprint. As the focus of the game is on simulation of the actual battlefield, the gameplay differed from many single-player shooters of the time. The player moves in conjunction with allied soldiers rather than alone, allied soldiers will assist the player in defeating enemy soldiers and advancing, however, the player is given charge of completing certain objectives. Number 7 is PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile features gameplay similar to that of the original Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Players parachute down to a remote island and fight to remain as the last player standing, competing alone or in teams of two or four, depending on the game mode selected before the match. Each match lasts about 30 minutes. It takes exactly 32 minutes and 50 seconds for the zone to close completely. After that, another 11 seconds or so until you die inside the zone, so potential max of about 33 minutes and 10 seconds if you try to heal yourself. The game begins with the participants flying in a plane over one of many possible maps, also selected before the match. As they cross the map, players choose where to parachute down. When the plane finishes its flight, a blue border forms around the perimeter of the island, marking the boundary between the safe zone and the exterior blue zone. The blue zone shrinks every few minutes, and anyone left in the zone will steadily lose health as long as they remain there, potentially to the point of death. The rate of health loss increases when the safe zone shrinks. When players first reach the island, they have no supplies or weapons. Therefore, they must find guns and ammunition around abandoned houses or loot them from downed players. In general, better weapons and equipment are found in more dangerous parts of the map. In addition to the regular shrinking of the safe zone, temporary red zones may randomly appear. These zones are barraged randomly with bombs for a relatively short time. Touching an exploding bomb will immediately kill or down you. From time to time, a plane flies over the battlefield to release a package with special equipment, potentially guncraft that cannot be found elsewhere on the island. All of these special events, including the normal safe zone shrinking, are announced to the players before they occur to give a fair warning. Number 6 is Free Fire. Free Fire is a free-to-play battle royale game developed and published by Garena for Android and iOS. It was released on the 8th of December 2017. It became the most downloaded mobile game globally in 2019 and has over 1 billion downloads on Google Play Store. In the first quarter of 2021 it was the highest-grossing mobile game in the US. In November 2019, it surpassed $1 billion in lifetime revenue. As of 2021, Free Fire had surpassed 150 million daily active users. In Free Fire, players control a character in a third-person perspective and use a joystick to move. The fire button allows them to shoot and throw items. The character can perform actions such as jumping, crawling, and lying down. During gameplay, players can utilize the blue wall grenade as a form of cover to protect against damage. Game Modes Free Fire offers over 15 game modes, including Team Deathmatch, Clash Squad, Big Head, Explosive Jump, Cold Steel, Zombie Hunt, Rampage, and Pet Mania. However, modes other than Battle Royale, Clash Squad, and Lone Wolf are only available during special events. Number 5 is Days Gone. Days Gone is a 2019 action-adventure video game developed by Ben Studio and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The game was released for the PlayStation 4 in April 2019. A Windows port was released in May 2021. Days Gone is a third-person action-adventure game set in a post-apocalyptic open world. The player controls Deacon St. John, an outlaw-turned-drifter bounty hunter who prefers life on the road to wilderness encampments. The game takes place two years after a pandemic killed almost all of humanity and transformed millions of others into freakers, mindless, zombie-like creatures that evolve quickly. Swarmers, a nocturnal type of freaker, hide in their nests during daytime but often congregate, wander around, and search for food and water at night. Players can lure swarmers toward other enemies, causing the two groups to fight one another. Other enemies include newts, who are infected adolescents and opportunistic hunters who only attack Deacon when he enters their territory or has poor health. The game includes infected wildlife, called runners and ragers, and hostile human enemies. 
Players can be overwhelmed by hordes and must keep their distance. Deacon can use firearms, melee weapons, traps, explosives and choke points to kill Freakers. Number 4 is Arc Raiders. Arc Raiders is a free-to-play, third-person, PvPVE extraction shooter set in a lethal future Earth ravaged by a mechanized threat known as Arc. You're a raider, earning your keep in the struggling colony of Speranza, fighting for survival against Arc and other raiders standing in your way. Welcome to Calabretta, raider. This place isn't safe and hasn't been for a long time. About a decade ago, a mysterious mechanized threat appeared here. They're known as Arc. People have fled to the underground colony of Speranza, seeking supplies to survive and shelter from the machines. Demand for resources is at an all-time high, but getting those resources is a risky job, and it isn't for everyone. But it is a job for you. That's why you've enlisted as a raider, scavenging for vital supplies that are scattered across the landscape. Everything from leftovers from yesterday's run-in with Ark to the unlikely remains of a pinball machine. Out there, the stakes are high, and you will have to fight for your loot. Lethal arc machines roam the surface. And there are no rules in Calabretta, so beware of other raiders. With the traders in Speranza, trust is hard earned and easily lost. You need to earn your keep. So don't come back from a quest empty-handed. When you see another raider chased by a swarm of arc drones, do you go in for the kill? Do you lend a helping hand? Or do you hold back and feast on the valuable remains? Arc Raiders is an upcoming third-person, PvPVE extraction shooter, set in a lethal future Earth. Number 3 is Rise of the Ronin. Rise of the Ronin is an upcoming action role-playing video game developed by Koei Tecmo's team Ninja and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The game is scheduled to release for the PlayStation 5 on March 22, 2024. Rise of the Ronin allows players to create a custom character. Combat features a wide array of weapons common during the Boshin War, such as katanas and various Boshin War firearms. The game features story choices at key moments, allowing players to side with or fight against various non-player characters, affecting the story. Historic cities Yokohama, Kyoto and Edo can be explored, as well as areas in the countryside. The player can traverse with various means, such as a horse, grappling hook or glider. The game also features the ability to swap between three difficulties, as well as a three-player cooperative multiplayer mode. Number 2 is The Day Before. The Day Before was a multiplayer survival horror extraction shooter video game developed by F-Fantastic and published by Mydona. Set in the future, players control the character who must traverse and survive in the fictional, post-apocalyptic, New Fortune City, which has been overrun by zombies. It was announced in 2021 and released in early access on 7 December 2023 for Microsoft Windows on Steam. The day before offers players a uniquely reimagined journey into post-apocalyptic open-world MMO survival set in the present day on the US East Coast following a deadly pandemic. Just four days after launching on Steam, the day before developer F-Fantastic announced that its game was a failure financially and that no more updates would be released for the early access title. F-Fantastic, saying it lacked the funds to continue, was closing. The studio then wiped its YouTube channel, deleting all official uploads of the day before gameplay trailers. Its CEO has disappeared from social media, and the game itself has been pulled from sale on Steam. The game's publisher, Mydona, said on social media that it's working with Valve to provide refunds. The sequence of events, and F-Fantastic's promises about what the day before would be, have led many players and purchasers of the game to call it a scam. Polygon has reached out to F-Fantastic, its CEO, and publisher Mydona, as well as Valve, for comment on the day before's launch and removal from Steam. But all parties have refused to respond so far. To recap the events leading up to the day before's disastrous launch, we have to go back much further. Developer F-Fantastic was founded in 2015 and released its first game, Eerie Survival Adventure The Wild Eight, two years later. Back then, the small independent studio went by the name Eight Points and used Kickstarter to fund development of its first game. Eduard Godetsev, lead developer of The Wild Eight, co-founded F-Fantastic with his brother Azen Godetsev. 
F-Fantastic would go on to release first-person horror survival experience Dead Dozen, Artistic Adventure Radiant 1, and Horror Hide and Seek Game Prop Night, which are all available on Steam. And finally, at number 1 is Dying Light. Dying Light is a 2015 survival horror video game developed by Techland and published by Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment. The game's story follows an undercover agent named Kyle Crane who is sent to infiltrate a quarantine zone in a fictional Middle Eastern city called Heron. It features an enemy-infested, open-world city with a dynamic day-night cycle, in which zombies are slow and clumsy during daytime but become extremely aggressive at night. The gameplay is focused on weapons-based combat and parkour, allowing players to choose fight or flight when presented with dangers. The game also features an asymmetrical multiplayer mode, originally set to be a pre-order bonus, and a four-player cooperative multiplayer mode. The game is set in an open-world environment called Heron. Initially, an area named the slums can be freely explored, later adding a second area, accessible via sewers, called Old Town. Players traverse this urban environment, which is overrun by vicious zombies. There is an emphasis on parkour mechanics, which allow players to perform actions such as climbing ledges, leaping from edges, sliding, jumping between roofs and ziplining. A grappling hook allows players to climb up buildings and quickly travel between places. As players explore the game's world, they can scavenge supplies and loot, which can be used to craft new weapons or sold to vendors. The player character can utilize his survivor sense to identify all nearby loot and use locked picks to open locked chests and locked vehicles. Players can also complete various side missions by accepting tasks issued by the non-playable characters in the game's safe zones. As players explore Heron, they can also pick up various collectibles such as notes and journals, and listen to voicemail recordings. Dying Light contains a dynamic day-night cycle. During the day, players can set traps, save random survivors, and make their way to airdrops. The infected are slow, apathetic, and easily visible and they can be easily avoided. Players can use environmental traps, such as spikes, electrified fences, and gas tanks, to kill the infected. At night, the infected transform to become much more dangerous. Without daylight, the senses of the infected become more acute and accurate. They can also sprint after the player character, inflict more damage, and gain the ability to jump and climb buildings. For players to avoid contact, they need to use their survivor sense to locate and avoid the infected. If the player character is spotted, they can use distractions and traps to reduce the number of infected. If you like the video please subscribe the channel and comment which game you like.